verse 5. What does the Bible say? For in death there is no remembrance of you. Your remembrance of Thanksgiving must be today. Let's do this thing now. Tomorrow can be too late. For in death there is no remembrance. In the grave, who would you give thanks? Write it in your Bible. Write it in your notebook. Get your wife's head here. Transcribe it on it. But write it somewhere. It's a in death there is no. So if you see, there's an opportunity for you to. There are too many things. God took you to school. When the plane shoot, you promise when you land, you pay your life. <laughs> you have it. Okay. So you are arrears in your Thanksgiving. And today you are going to clear your arrears. <laughs> Let's say it one before I go to my kids' future. Five reasons why you must give God thanks. Let's set it in concrete. I give an academic approach to preach it. Let's set the principle and let's test drive it. So now let's look at five reasons why you must give that. One, Psalm 92, verse 1. Write it down if you can. One of these is it may save your life. Psalm 92, verse 1. First reason. It is good. Like the Nigerian will say, it is good. It is good to give that to the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, I put to you that what we are doing today is good. <laughs> it is not bad at all. It is good. So it means if you are, if you don't develop the perpetual habit of giving thanks to God, something is intrinsically wrong with you. Yeah. There is something wrong with your chemistry. So he said, it is good to give God thanks. Lift up and say, Lord, I appreciate it. Number two. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Second, these are the five key reasons why Thanksgiving is mandatory. Number two, it is the will of God. What we are doing is the will of God. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Let's keep it in. In everything, give thanks. I miss you, amen. amen. In everything, give thanks. For what? This is the will of God. So ladies and gentlemen, I place it before you that thanksgiving is the will of God. Yeah. Number three, it is a key to assess the promise of God. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 36. Thanksgiving is the key to assess the promise of God. Hey, can I ask you a question? Psalm 
Samuel chapter 1. Wow. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 27. I'll run a commentary on it. We'll not be able to run and read all the this. For this child, no, no, no. First Samuel, yeah. Leave it there. Give me a wave. I've told you this participatory preaching, interactive preaching, it's a body form of preaching. You are participating in the sermon. So you have no observer state of strike again. I want to know you are hiding somewhere there and you are not losing off. I want to know you are not on WhatsApp. Thanks for My brother. So, for this child, now when we, we, we go back into the centrality of the scripture, we come across, and I, I ask you to do that, because I want to hit some key scriptures as we run down. There was the story of a man called Elkan. Say Elkan. He was married to a woman called Hannah. Say Hannah. And Hannah was a second wife. As the way of life is, the first wife had two children. Hannah had none. In fact, the Bible specialist says God had closed the womb. There are things God does for which he doesn't owe anybody explanation. God is God. Yeah. It's in his place and you are in your place, period. You move on with your life. Oh, can someone find a reason to give 
and they are dancing the dog and stay out of it. My mouth is running to you. Shoot for 
five years straight. What is the difference? My father sees it and put it on the shelf. Let's see, let's see, I. Those are the shoes that I grow in. And when I'm coming, my friends think I am Papa Ajazu. That's not like this. And they think I'm being stylish. They don't know it's my misfortune. I'm not happy. 